Good morning, everybody. I think it's still morning. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Dominic Zanardi. Um, I'm on the sharing the stage with uh, my friend and colleague, Matthew Sullivan, who uh, I join on the infrastru infrastructure security team at Instacart. Um, so I want to thank, uh, want to thank the audience for spending some time with us, but I also want to thank uh, B-Sides for uh, giving us the opportunity to sell you a yacht. Not an 80-foot catamaran like we'd all love, uh, but this is yet another AI talk. Um, we're here to, uh, most, most, at most security conferences, uh, AI is viewed in a negative light. We want to provide a positive light we're not saying LLMs are a magic wand, but they're used to greatly enhance uh, security tooling. Uh, this isn't a paradigm shift, but it gives small teams the breathing room we we need uh, because the cavalry isn't coming, but the controls are. We have a lot to do. Security team workloads are growing. Um, Am I wrong? Is anyone bored at work today? Um, <laughs> we need to be faster and more agile. Every day we hear do more with less. There are always more controls. Who's going to write all this junk? Ron, he knows what's up. So we have a couple options. Uh, with all of these incoming requirements, uh, we can level up, be the best team we can be, be the best in the world, or we can turn to our robot overlords um, and reach out to Skynet because we also believe in work-life balance. So automating the gray area. Um, when I think about security automations, uh, I think about binary decisions. Most of the time when we're setting up automations, we deal with true-false, we deal with static data sets. LLMs can help us in the gray area where context is everything, um, where humans might have to spend hours poring over logs, poring over giant data sets uh, just to make decisions. Let's say your audit team asks you, we need users to only request appropriate access every single time. Before AI, this might be a look you give your auditor, I don't know. But with AI, let's vacuum up the previous audit logs, let's vacuum up the history that's been provided, um, and recommend the appropriate role to a user based on what they've actually used. Another one, we need you to review and update your role description when there's a change in privilege. Audit will ask us to regularly update our role descriptions whenever something changes. Before AI, go through every IAM role, look at the policy statements, update the descriptions for them, put them in a spreadsheet, provide that as evidence. With AI, let's instead take those steps, pull the policy statements to a role, send those to an LLM, and have the LLM write the description for you. It's not difficult. It's just tedious. Why not have AI do it? So uh, before we demo this, uh, just quick crash course in, in prompting an LLM. Uh, they have two query components. Uh, the template or system prompt is the first one. Uh, we want to make sure we provide accurate instructions to the LLM uh, so that it knows how to operate. The user prompt following it typically provides the content uh, that it needs to follow those instructions. Um, quick reminder, um, it's a good uh, thing to note that when you're co-mingling instructions and data, you want to make sure that um, you lock it down if the data you feed to the LLM is provided by the user. So. Role descriptions from AWS APIs. Um, let's look at how we'd use a tool, an AI-driven script, 
uh, to generate role descriptions from AWS APIs. Um, you're going to see a side-by-side -side display of data. On the left are the prompts that we send to the LLM. On the right is the response from the LLM. So let's generate a role description. We'll switch that. Perfect. So we're going to kick off this Python script. As I mentioned, we're using a library that splits data down. On the left is what we are sending the LLM. I am an internal auditor. Provide your persona right away. This helps build the output you get back. If you want to appease auditors, say you were an auditor. Um, we give more information. We're basically saying, please provide a three sentence summary of what can be done with this role so we can use it. Stand by for a list of actions. In this case, this is a live pull from a demo AWS environment. We're literally pulling the um, IAM policy statements from the role that we've sent. And with the system prompt and the user prompt together, we're going to get a response from the LLM based on those policy statements saying, this role allows users to manage and interact with the S3, SQS. You want it to be um, you want it to be descriptive enough to approve, be approved for uh, auditors on the outside from an evidence perspective. You want requesters to understand what they're asking for without showing them a policy statement. Um, and you want the approvers to know what they're authorizing. So this is highly visible in three spaces. Um, at Instacart, we use a platform for access requests known as Conductor One. Um, that platform is completely based, or at least in our configuration, we base all of our config in Terraform and identity as code. So this piece can easily plug into our Terraform files. So the next step here, you know, that one, is to take this information and literally pass it into a pull request. So not only are we generating it, we're now sending it to GitHub. <laughs> Except my windows disappeared. You're good. Okay. Perfect. So as we open this up, as I mentioned, all of our configuration for Conductor One, the access request platform, is based on uh, Terraform files. This role description used to be an example role that does a little of this, a little of that. We now have up-to-date information on exactly what this is. You can change the configuration to be as short or as long as you want. Um, but right here, we can review the changes, approve it, and move on. All audiences uh, are happy. Auditors, requesters, and the authorizers. So, Sully's here to walk us through how Instacart's uh, using these concepts in production to solve more real world challenges, solving the pains. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'll have you hold my speaker now. Thank you. I'll trade. <laughs> so, that's a really simple example, right? We're pulling in data, we're throwing it to an LLM, it gives us a description. You can probably start thinking about some really interesting use cases you might have, though. Are there times in your business when there is some complicated alert? I know the cloud um, tooling that we utilize, the alerting is typically very hard to understand. And if that triggers some sort of event that comes to your phone, what's helpful? The JSON blob? <laughs> or, hey, it looks like a new IAM user is doing some weird things in your AWS account, right? Even using these simple concepts, it can actually really help be a quality of life change. And so these are the types of things that we're working on at Instacart, is even taking our alerting, running it in through, for us, we use Tynes, a Tynes workflow that just makes it easier to digest. The other thing, too, is then my on-call rotation just doesn't have to be so scary to a new hire. You know, I remember when I started on-call, it was a lot to take in. And if it's more simple English, <laughs> then it allows somebody to feel a little bit more relief as, as these pieces of data come in and out. So again, it's really important to us that you look at these things, not as some scary new technologies that are going to ruin our lives, but like, well, what if we did embrace them? And what if we actually made it 
so that these were a quality of life improvement for us so we didn't feel so burned out. At this point, I'm going to talk about how we solved this real world problem. We wanted to go public. Uh, so I started Instacart. I accepted my offer on the day we filed our S1, which is our intent to go public with the SEC. Uh, what I did not realize is that basically from that exact moment until we went public in September of 2023, that is all I would do <laughs> was just that work. Uh, and in case you're wondering, no, they didn't tell me that is what I would be working on. But that's okay. I really enjoyed it. Um, so a significant amount of time was really spent trying to figure out how to build an access control program that could meet our objectives and we could be proud of. You see, when a company goes public in the United States, your stock offering becomes subject to Sarbanes-Oxley of 2020 or 2002. Uh, and what we could do is bore you to death or we could not do that and simply say that basically this means that you don't cook the books. And I, as an Instacart shareholder, have come to the conclusion that's generally a good idea, not cooking books. So SOX dictates that we will have the right people uh, that have access to financial data, only authorized persons. This makes sense. We don't want people, when, yep, we don't want people seeing materially impactful financial information or compromising the integrity of that financial information. Makes sense. You see, there was this company called Enron. Enron lied about their financials. Investors and even some of their own employees lost everything, jail time, you get the picture. The entirety of SOX can be distilled down to saying, boy, that sucked, let's not do that anymore. Sorry, Ben Zoxley. So, SOX takeaway, access matters. It's the only thing I really want you to take away about SOX. Doing SOX means that you generally care about access. All right, so. We've got my mandate and my deadline. IPO is coming. Uh, what can I do to make this access program great? Because I have this thing, I don't know if you guys are like this, where I don't like working and I would rather do literally anything else all the time. But because I have to work in order to survive, then I do it too hard, right? And so if I'm gonna go in and make an access program, it's gonna be awesome, right? Uh, so one of the things that we settled on early is, okay, we'll use just-in-time access, JIT. Um, and basically in JIT, you grant temporary permissions. As Dom mentioned a second ago, we did a evaluation, ended up purchasing a commercial solution in this space, uh, who we felt was aligned with our values of kind of like disrupting the status quo a little bit. Um, so we fast forward and uh, now we've got our rollout of that done. We've got one roll onto this just-in-time flow. It's kind of like an administrative role our infrastructure team uses. Um, but we hit a snag though, as we quickly realized that Manager approval sucks. That's really hard. You see, the problem is your manager is busy. They lack context. They lack expertise. Sorry, managers, you do. Some managers just turned 50 and are out of the office trying to find themselves by backpacking across Europe, and most people just buy a sports car and get a dog, but what do I know? So, we need to do some real talk about how we're gonna fix this. Spice level 100, here we go. Let's talk about doing everything everywhere all at once with access requests. Only instead of that, it's everywhere all at once is on fire. Everything is on fire and everything is terrible in the status quo in our industry. And I think it's time we acknowledge it. Security and audit continue to double down on the existing way of doing access requests. Whether that's meeting socks or if you're a FedRAMP shop, whatever it is, you're doing the same thing we've been doing for the last 15 years, possibly. Maybe, you're, maybe you've improved and that's great. The problem is the model is fundamentally broken we're made to do it anyway, though. We have to do the same. We submit the ticket, and we wait a week for a manager approval, and we wait a week for the owner to actually action on the request. And then you defend your access until they pry it from your cold, dead hands. Because it took so darn long to get it in the first place, you will never let it lapse. Somebody walks up, do you still use this? Oh, every day. Yeah, I keep prod alive. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Being able to hit that S3 bucket is keeping prod alive. I gotcha, right? The fact of the matter is, your access requests look like this graph when it comes to manager approval. Denied, 0.1%, approved, 99.9%, and it's because they clicked the wrong button. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Our industry has a bad case of the not my problems when it comes to access approval. With ask, ask your manager for approval and ask system owner for approval, we've solved access requirements as a checkbox compliance exercise and nothing more. We haven't added security. So I thought to myself, since I'm spicy, 
let's not do that. How are we going to fix it? And I figured it out. We simply had to kill all the humans. We could do that, though, by pre-approving access. Our identity governance tool allows us to provision temporary access, right? So what we did is we set a maximum time of 90 days, or less for really important things, and we allow users to renew that immediately as long as their user is part of a pre-approved set of attributes that we keep in the Terraform that we were just talking about. So Dom actually spearheaded building a, uh, a Terraform provider, and we want to share that with the world. It is specific to Conductor1, the tool that we use at Instacart, um, but this actually is uh, a Terraform provider that kind of puts Conductor1 into the Instacart way. And so we've built a kind of a, an abstraction layer. It's opinionated, um, but we think it works well. And most importantly, maybe it can help somebody else. And if so, fantastic. So have a look at that if uh, you happen to be a Conductor1 shop or you just want to see how we're thinking about this problem uh, for whatever tool you might be using. So we've done it, everybody. We solved access. Hooray. OK, it's not actually that easy. We solved a good portion of it, but the problem is that some things aren't cut and dry. This is not cut and dry. We have developer power user. Developer power user can basically write to uh, high impact S3 resources. And it's not clear how we would build rules for that. So we had to set it up for manager approval. Uh, you see, the condition for needing this role, as far as we could tell in our role engineering, was have you worked here a long time? Are you important? Do you get involved when things break? That's a hard set of criteria to add to your workday profile. How are we going to solve that? We need another robot. So we need to build a robot. We wanted to develop a process where we could trust uh, the automation of just-in-time approvals instantly in risk-appropriate situations. We wanted to leverage an LLM to do what it does best, to take in a huge amount of data and help us sift through it. I must be clear, I know you're already thinking it, no, we do not ask an LLM, should we approve this? Don't do that. That will go poorly for you. What we can ask the LLM is, look at these people who already have access to this entitlement, look at the person who's requesting access, are there similarities between those two things, an LLM is really good at that, taking a huge amount of data and sifting through that. I can do that as a human, but for an entitlement that might have 100, 200 people in it, that's going to take me a long time. With an LLM, it takes seconds. We also are optimizing the end user experience. We can get rid of a bunch of significant complexity. From their side of things, it just looks like they put in a request and it gets approved and they get access. They don't realize that this entire crazy thing has happened behind the scenes to make that occur. So. Let's talk about automated access approvals. We built Gadget. And in case you're wondering, yes, we open sourced it. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, Gadget is our answer to this problem. And most importantly, it's our answer in a generic way. Um, what we didn't want to do was solve this just for ourselves and then just kind of vanish into the ether. So we've built a pluggable interface for interfacing identity information, LLMs, and IGA tools. Um, we're pretty excited about it. And we'd like to show you a demo now. About an hour ago, I submitted an access request. Uh, and everything that you're about to see is actually real in production, which means that it will fail and the demo will suck. Uh, and when that happens, I have a recording. Um, so my access request is for the AWS role that I use for my daily job. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this utility. It's going to take a look at that access request. And what you're going to see is that left and right viewpoint, uh, again, of interfacing with the LLM. So we're going to see how we prompt the LLM uh, with this gadget utility. Because it's going fairly quickly, I'll just scroll up. System prompt here is that we have a list of employee IDs, uh, and we're creating examples for the LLM. So this is a very verbose example. I'm sorry. It takes a lot to prompt an LLM to do these things. But we basically say a new applicant would want to join your group. And for example, if they were an analyst in online grocery, which of these two job titles is relevant? And it would answer, well, the staff engineer in online grocery is the most relevant versus a compliance auditor. If there's no overlapping information, just return nothing. We take that system prompt and send it. And now we send our user prompt. So this is my real data. I am a staff security engineer. Whoa, boy. I'm a staff security engineer on the eng-security team. Take a look at all of these titles of people who also already have this role and compare it. 
and we get a fantastic match right away. That match happens to be Matthew Lorimore, senior or a staff engineer on my team. So we're doing good. We've got an exact match. Great. Next thing we're going to do is rerun that same logic, and we're going to ask about organizational units. Many companies have different organizational units that do different things. Let's take a look at that relationship between the OU I'm a part of and the role that we're requesting. Same thing. We prompt the LLM, and then we start feeding it real-world data. Out of that is going to come a lot of really strong matches. Effectively, this is going to say, hey, there are a lot of people in that role that match your organizational unit very well. What are we doing with this data? Each time I get an answer, uh, literally in the code base, it's going into uh, as a, a score, a numerical score, that's going into an array and just being stored. We're going to run a computation function in a little bit. So we're not making decisions yet. We're just getting some results. Uh, in the real world, this is actually something that we fire off all three questions at the same time in a multi-threaded pool and then get all the answers back at once and check for the result. The final thing we're going to do is to actually take a look at my uh, entitlements name and description. A second ago, Dom just told you that we can do this crazy thing where we look at all of the entitlements access. We can generate a description. A human reviews that, make sure that it seems correct. We load it into our Terraform. We pull it right back out in this tool and then compare my job function to the description on the entitlement. The AI will take a look and see that I, in security, am requesting the security role and it's a role used by the security team. What's the relationship score? 1.5. This is the one place where you could be like, what if the AI hallucinates? Because I've asked it to generate me a score. So we have to be careful with this data. This could be bad data, I will admit. So how did we check that? First, we ran this through three months of data back and replayed it all from real access requests. And we manually looked at every single score. And I said, does that look logical? And it was within the realm of being good enough in 100% of cases. And it was perfectly accurate in about 95% of cases. So we just determined that was plenty good enough for our cases. The other thing I need to remind you of is our goal is to just not approve everything. If we've done that, we're already better than the status quo, right? So we can have a little tolerance for you know failure here. All right. Uh, so now we've taken those three scores. We add them together. I get a 2.0. Anything above one means this is probably a good match. Gadget has a configuration option, which allows you to say which entitlements uh, allow automatic approval and addition to those roles. If you're going to do the manager thing, because maybe you have a high impact role and you don't want to do auto approvals, Gadget still comments. And that can really help your managers. So of course, you have that rubber stamp problem, right? But we add a comment that says, we really recommend you don't do this. Take a close look. Understand what you're being requested. Understand what you're approving. Understand whether or not the person who's requested it really needs this as part of their job function. And we found an incredible amount of success with that. So even if we don't do auto approval, just the guidance piece, we've seen immediate value at Instacart, which has been pretty awesome. Where is my display? Hmm. I've lost my slide deck. I'll just reopen it. All right. Again, one of the things that was really important to us as we started this journey is I hate when companies take more than they give from the community. And this was something that I thought we could really try to change the way we do things in our industry. And so we're really excited to be able to open source this. I beg you, we would love to hear from you. I want to see PRs. I want to see you add more tools. Um, and, and this is a very, uh, like I said, a very pluggable inter interface. If you want to run a different LLM, we use OpenAI, you want to use Anthropic. That's supported. Write a plugin for it. If you want to use your own IGA tool, that's a plugin. Supported. If you want to write your own scoring mechanism and not rely on ours, Fantastic. You can write it out as a plugin. This is also able to support running as a daemon or as a lambda or as a web server. So if you have a web hooking capability in your existing IGA tool, it supports that out of the box as well. At this point, we're going to go ahead and stop and ask what questions the audience has. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming. And I'm expecting good questions because this is kind of a spicy topic. My friends in the middle. 
Seems like the mic is off. Now the mic is on. Perfect. That's good. That's a great use for LLM. Thanks for the talk and the, cool, and the tool, especially the open source tool. Uh, I'm imagining you didn't start with zero access. You started with a company that has a bunch of stuff that you can use to go tell whether the current request matches past requests. Mm -hmm. um, have you thought about how to do this in a, like a bootstrap situation, right? Like we're going into a new cloud or first time we've inter interfaced with this tool or those sort of situations. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be honest, uh, I did not think about how you would start from zero to one just because I was starting at like 99 and going to 100. Um, but uh, I think that there is a really interesting opportunity to do some incredible things with, let's say you're really doing zero to one. No company is actually at zero, right? So we can come back to what Dom was talking about. If you can write some basic things that say, take in some cloud trail logs, see what people are actually doing, and then maybe that can help you with your role engineering. That's great. I mean, there are companies out there, trust me, I know we're customers of them, that want to charge you $200,000 to tell you what your people are using and then provide you a good role template to use. We do that in 40 lines of Python, yep. right? So there's an opportunity there to just be scrappy. And, um, and I think for me, that returns me to my roots. I don't know about everybody in this room, but like, I started as the one security engineer at a startup, and it was horrible. And I had a ton of fun and did it for 10 years, right? And like, I remember those days, we didn't have budget for products. You just build some shell scripts and pray. And it was enjoyable to kind of get to look at this situation kind of like that. Be scrappy, be efficient and fast. And how much progress can we make with as little time as possible? And I think we achieved that goal. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I would just say, just to echo that, when you have CloudTrail logs, feed them in and tell it, hey, generate me a new role. We've done that out of, in a couple of instances, so. It works out. Yeah, can't stress enough, human in the loop is still needed. I mean, you need to be sanity checking these things. It does not always spit out valid Terraform. <laughs> yeah, so human in the loop, but it's, it's again, it's a tool. Yes, man I've never seen before from Instacart. <laughs> um, hi, uh, what do you do if you have auditors who, even though they're not supposed to ask for absolute assurance, they're asking for absolute assurance and they're going to ask you, and I know they're going to ask you this because I work with you, uh, how do you know for sure that it's not hallucinating? Like what additional checks can you add beyond reverting back to a horrible manual user access review? Well, assume that you're going to do a garbage, like, you know, normally you'd say garbage in, garbage out. We're going to start garbage out and then check garbage in, right? So take everything, all those IDs that you just saw spit out back to us. Double check those. Go back to your same list of users. Make sure that the data that you fed in stayed the same. The IDs are still the same. The job titles you fed in came back out. An LLM isn't going to start swapping those. It's going to hallucinate them. And so you have good signal right there to know if what is generating is real or not real. Um, and then the other thing, too, is you have to ask just super basic questions. You saw the structure of the JSON that we request back. It is dead simple, simple structure, simple key names. We're not doing like nested JSON you know, responses. You can't, the LLM will freak. Simple questions. It's like talking to a four-year-old. I would know I have one. So. <laughs> that was good. Thanks again, appreciate your time today.